This video is by Straight Goods News. SGNews. We held a symposium because the issues that uh, were really brought to light by uh, the Westray explosion and by the subsequent events after that still are outstanding. I mean, fundamentally, the question of corporate criminal responsibility. Why are so many people? Why do so many people come from all over Canada and other parts of the world? This is obviously a big thing. Oh yes, oh yes, it is. And and uh, I think it's a big thing because of uh, two reasons. One is that uh, you know, people are frustrated by the lack of progress in holding corporations responsible for what happens. And I think uh, the second part of that is that uh, there are people working in different places all over the world. Uh, to try and actually hold uh, corporations accountable. So it's the two things together. And uh, people are doing different things in different places, different places within Canada and different parts of the world. And so the, the opportunity to bring everybody together, in some cases even remotely by, uh, by um, video, is an opportunity to exchange and learn from different, uh, uh, the different uh, experiences people have. You used a phrase I hadn't heard before, corporate criminal negligence. Please talk about corporate, corporate criminal negligence. Well, corporate... Why that phrase is so important Why to Why it's so important to me? I think it's because... Um, uh, let's pick up with uh, uh, what is it initially an, an abstract legal concept. That a corporation is a person, right? Just like you and me. They have charter rights, like you and me. Um, they have all the same defenses in a criminal matter, you know, right to silence, all this sort of stuff, right? But they don't have responsibilities that are in any way commensurate to that, or accountabilities that are in any way commensurate to that. Um, and uh, one of the things that came out of the Western Explosion, one of the things that led to the reforms of the Criminal Code, was to recognize that. And so that we understand that although we have this idea that we're an individual or a legal person, we are now closer in a legal sense to describing how they function. That they function because senior managers make decisions and as a consequence of those decisions, what workers or what they call representatives of the corporation act in different ways. So it really is about finally coming to grips with, with how they behave and recognizing that when Managers make decisions not to put something in place that would reduce the risk of, a, of something catastrophic happening. And a worker is injured or killed, a member of the public is injured or killed, they can be held accountable for it. And they can be held accountable in two ways. One is at corporation, as the corporation itself, but as importantly, the senior managers can be held personally responsible for the decisions that they make. And then that, uh, a key part of all of that, I think, and you heard it repeatedly over the last day and a half here, is that until we do that, there's not going to be a fundamental change in the way in which corporations operate in terms of their impact on on people, on the environment, and the society. There are a number of law enforcement professionals here uh, for the symposium. What do they have to say about the possibilities, the, uh, the likelihood that that the prosecutions are going to happen, that they will happen. Um, I think uh, I think what we heard, what we're seeing, is that um, because at a political level, level of the attorney general, for example, there has not been decisions um, in a systematic way to take these on. That individual police officers responding to circumstances that they see have had to take this up. And the same is true with prosecutors who, you know, not getting any particular guidance from um, the politicians the way they should be, are taking this on. And so I think what we heard is that despite our frustration, there have been so few charges since 2004 when uh, the, act, the amendments were passed, there's only been something like six or seven attempts to prosecute. Um, there are people, there are police officers or prosecutors who are actually trying to make this work. And that's one of the things we wanted to focus on, that it's, it's, just not, just a, it's not a question, but it's not doable or it can't be done. It's that um, so far the, all the resources have not been mobilized effectively to make it happen. Are there things that labor uh, activists, that union uh, officials can do to encourage it happening? Oh, certainly. And, and that's another very good question because there are examples of that. We heard representatives from the British Columbia Federation of Labor, from the Ontario Federation of Labor, from the, from the OFL and, uh, sorry, from the Canadian Labor Congress, and in particular from the Steelworkers uh, Union about what they're doing to advance it. And, and it's a very respectful, very um, uh, 
comprehensive strategy, right? They're going to the Attorney General's office, trying to meet with the Attorney General says, why aren't you doing this? Um, uh, the OFL is sending out notices to police officers, uh, police uh, officers and to their divisions across the province saying, do you know that this exists, right? So, so that when they are confronted with a workplace fatality, or even when, even when they're uh, confronted by a corporate event that results in a member of the public who has died, that they understand that there are these tools available. Um, so, and and I, I mean, there are other examples of that, but I think that's very clear as to what the labor movement's doing, and part of what this was about, and why we had representatives from other organizations speaking, particularly on the last panel, is that, that we can expand that to bring in others who are concerned about uh, get, getting corporations under control and, and uh, concerned about um, improving uh, conditions in which we live.